Welcome to St. Paul's and St. Matthias Lutheran Churches. We are glad that you are here with us in place. We are glad that you are here with us in space. Welcome. My mic's not on. We're just gonna not pretend like that's not happening and we're gonna take a minute and fix it. <laughs> now? Yes? yes? No, <laughs> Mirka says no. Yes. Test. All right. So welcome. Welcome to everybody, both here in this place and in space. I do have a couple of announcements for this morning before we get started. Next Sunday, for anyone who is interested in playing the bells, we inv invite you to stay after worship for a bell meeting to figure out how you may do that. Also, this last week, you received in your emails some intentional discernment forms. We invite you to fill those out via email or have provided hard copies in the back. So please let us know what you are dreaming of, hoping of, and what you fear. With that, let us continue with the confession. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. <laughs>
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. O oh God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people that we may embody the justice and peace of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Ephesians, the second chapter. So then remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who, who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall. That is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, then thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death the hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure. even to eat. They had no food to eat. And they went away on a boat to a deserted place by themselves. 
Now, many of them going recognized and recognized them. And they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to a land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about the whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his close cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The gospel of the Lord. A cornerstone. What's the significance of a cornerstone? In stone buildings, it's the first laid block. It holds together the rest of the stones. It carries the weight of the stones. Without the cornerstone in these buildings, the buildings crumble. This text today reminds us that Jesus is the cornerstone of the church, of our life together. It is Jesus that carries the weight. It is Jesus that holds us. The temple of God is not a building. The structure is weak and unreliable. The structure is made up of the likes of you and me. They and them. We are the dwelling place for God. Thanks be to God for Jesus Christ, because without Christ as the cornerstone, I am certain we would crumble. A little bit of context on this letter of the Ephesians this morning. Many scholars suggest this letter is not in response to a particular event or sent to a particular church, but it's a generalized letter sent to many churches in order to re-socialize all people into God's purposes and family. It still speaks to us today. I don't know if many of you noticed, but Jane, I want to thank you for reading in those first two words of the Ephesians reading today, because the first two words of that reading were so then, which means therefore, or in light of, and to read that reading without understanding what came before does not leave us with a full understanding. The reading, the previous text said, for grace, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Only in the light of the gift of grace, can we begin to understand the indwelling of Christ in all believers? This church, this people, this place that God dwells is not formed by a structure and place and time, but it is all believers in all times and all places. This gift and grace empowers us to work with Christ with Christ who dwells within us. But dividing walls, woo! We as humans, we want to build, and that was apparent back then, and it continues to be apparent now. At the time of this letter, 
the dividing wall that was being built was between Gentiles, the adopted heirs to the kingdom, and Jews, the first chosen people of God. Where do we want to build walls today? Is it between those with light skin and those with dark? Those who are natural born citizens and those who are in a, immigrants. Those who get up every morning and work really hard and those who just need to get it together. Those who identify as St. Paul's Lutheran Church and those who identify as St. Matthias Lutheran Church. I wonder who it is that we work to build walls between rather than accept, all are a part of the building, the church, the wall that Jesus is the cornerstone. Today's scripture tells us that Christ is our peace and that the dividing wall has been torn down, that Christ has torn down the hostility between us. The dividing wall is gone. And our efforts are useless when we try to build them. They are not part of the work of the Lord. Yes. Our work in building walls will cause us pain and heartache, but it doesn't undo what God has done through Jesus Christ. The dividing walls are human things, not God things. Lauren Dangle is elegant in her rendering of what God says to us, to the believers, to his church. God says, you are loved when you can't feel a thing. You are strong when you feel weak. You are held when you are falling short. And when you feel like you don't belong, God says, you are mine. And this God who says those things to us says those same things to those for whom we are building dividing walls. The indwelling of God is in all of the body and it is beyond our human understanding. Our humanness does seek to divide, but Jesus who dwells within has built us together into one body. This is true when we bind ourselves together spiritually and when we build dividing walls. This letter is written to those who were circumcised and those who were not, to those who have foreskin and those who did not, to the Gentile and the Jew, and you are either one or the other. So to all that is God's, this is written. The Lord dwells in all of it. Man, even as I say this to you today, even as I wrote this, the human being in me says, but Lord. But what about those Christians who came into St. Paul's harassing this body of believers and suggested that we were doomed to hell? What about the person in the divorce who is making life miserable for the other? What about the addict child who torments the family to the point that the family cannot even open their eyes in the morning? Where are you, Lord, on the border? where children and family and people come hungering and seeking food and find right there where they come together that there are people who push them away and refuse to feed them. They find there on that border that there are people who when they find them want to simply exploit them. They find on that border that there are people who want to help them. 
in this body, Lord, that you build that is your church. Where are you? And the Lord says, I'm there. Teresa, I'm in you too. When you build dividing walls, I'm in you. When you rest peacefully in my care, I'm the cornerstone. And whether you are crumbling in the horrors of this world and working out of step with me, or you are resting in my care and in step with me, the Lord says, I am there. Truly, I can't always see the Lord sometimes in order to get my way. I even turn my face. And the Lord says, I know. Remember Saul, who while he was still breathing threats and murder against the disciples, became Paul and shares this message from the Ephesians with you today? I was there. Remember Judas, who betrayed me? I fed him, and I washed his feet. I was there. Remember Peter who denied me three times why I laid in the tomb after I had been crucified? I made him the leader of the church. I was there. And the tearing down and in the building up, Jesus Christ is the cornerstone and Jesus is here. Maybe this text today comes after the proclamation of the gift of grace because it is important that we not forget who is the cornerstone and that by God alone and the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ alone, there is a place for us in the body of believers, this place where God dwells. Siblings in Christ, fellow members of the dwelling place of God. Imagine, imagine if we started with this promise, started by trusting that Jesus is in the other's body, looked deep into the other's eyes, trusting that they are a sanctuary for God. If before we saw their humanity, we trusted, and that though it is hard to, for us to believe that we trusted Jesus dwells there. That Christ is the cornerstone to whom they are connected just as securely as we are. Maybe that's where this peace that Jesus is can be found. Today, I wonder what individual, what groups of people are you certain will always be estranged from wholeness? Come on. In our humanity, there are people or individuals we have deemed not worthy. But Jesus says, no, look and see, I am the cornerstone. I am dwelling there. Hmm. The temple of God, it's not a building. The structure is weak and unreliable. The structure is made up of the likes of you and me and they and them. We are the dwelling place for God. Thanks be to God that Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. Amen.
together with Christians from all places and times, let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son and the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our shepherd, we give you thanks and praise for your great works and attention to our prayers as we gather as a community of faith. Our shepherd, we pray for a just, respectful, and lasting solution to the long-standing conflict between Palestine and Israel. We pray for those most vulnerable to the violence, unjust laws, and displacements that stir fear, suspicion, abuse, and despair. Bless and sustain those working for peace, justice, and healing. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Our shepherd, we pray for the people of Haiti, for Pastor Livingston as he ministers in the atmosphere of the assassination of the president. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Our shepherd, Remind us daily that we live in hope and unity, drawn together as citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God with Christ at the center. Help us respond to your call to serve our neighbors in need and share the gospel with our unique gifts, skills, and passions of the spirit. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Our shepherd, as more bodies are recovered, continue to embrace the families and recovery workers in Surfside while also holding in prayer those sickened by the resurgence of COVID and those who care for them, especially in Florida. Continue to embrace also our own family, especially Herb and Teresa, Mary, Lou, Charles and Audrey, Michael and Sons, Charles and Barbara, Barbara Ann, James, Emmy, Karen, Sharon, John, Pastor Dale, Leilani, John, Arthur, Linda, Marcia, Janice, Tammy, Diane and family, Liddell, and we ask also for the following whom we name aloud or in our hearts. Ron and Gloria, the show family, especially the children. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our shepherd. Amen. At this time, we invite you to prayerfully consider your offering, taking time to give thanks to God for all that God has given you, 
our offerings are an act of our worship. Let us prayerfully consider our offerings now. Let us continue the service with thanksgiving for the word. Glory to you, O God, for your creative word, making and mending all things, evoking the cosmic hymn of praise and singing a love song for your beloved, your vineyard, your flock, your people. With all creation, we sing glory. Glory. Blessed are you for your liberating word, speaking through Moses and the prophets encountered in the gospels and proclaimed in the assembly, your freedom, forgiveness, and life for this world. With the whole world, we say blessing. Blessing. Holy are you, O God, for your living word among us wherever we gather, welcoming everyone to your feast and with grace and generosity bringing to earth the kingdom of heaven. With saints and angels, we cry, holy. Holy. Clothe us in your loving spirit, flowing from the crucified and risen one, and keep us awake to your presence and the people and places you call us to serve. Glory, praise, and blessings are yours, holy God, now and forever. Amen gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Let us please unmute at this time and say the Lord's Prayer and pray the Lord's Prayer. 
our Father in heaven, in heaven. Hallowed, be hallowed be your name. name. Your kingdom come, kingdom come. Your will be done, will will be be done. done. as it is in heaven. Earth, as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. Forgive those who sin against us. Save us. From the, the time of time, 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 time from evil, the rest rest from evil. evil. For the kingdom, the kingdom and the power, and the the power are yours, and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shone upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and share the good news. Thanks be Thanks to, to God. God. Have a good week, everyone. You too. You too Stay safe. You too. Bye.